Welcome back to Nick Lenz's Comic Corner. Classics, last non classics. <clears throat> this is episode number 485 and double shot number 388. Two X Men trades, and the last two trades leads to particular two trade series. First up, it's Extraordinary X Men Volume 4 IVX, which contains the last four issues of the series, issues 17 to 20. And X-Men Prime number one. Of course, the series because we launched X-Men Gold. Um, Jeff Lee writes all the issues that are extra X-Men in here. Yeah, he does that. With the artwork in here, <coughs> Eric Coda, <coughs> who also does inking for issue 19. Uh, he does issue 17, 19, 18, and 20 done by Victor Isabella and Andrea Sereno. Um, in issue 18, yeah, it's issue 18, um, issue 18 is basically uh, an issue that features artwork from the Old Man Logan series. It kind of reveals exactly what happened to Forge. Uh, apparently he was okay, and they do reference the events of Old Man Logan. Apparently he was not with the X-Men when, uh, well, when Wolverine was sort of, well, manipulated to kill all the X-Men. Except for Jumbo Yeah, she was the one who survived. Um, but a lot of this stuff basically just deals with uh, the first issue is just sort of a standalone issue just before the start of IVX, where uh, Storm basically makes a dying woman basically an official member of the X-Men, probably it's only honorary, but there's that. Um, I think it's uh, I think it's issue 19, yeah. Issue 19 is a focus on Ileana. Uh, it's a follow-up to a storyline that happened pretty early on in the series. I would say the second story arc, where there was a girl she was training, and... It was revealed that, well, she had killed her, and then, of course, now her soul resides in the Soul Sword. Colossus, basically, is in the issue. She briefly fights Crystal, and that's an issue actually that during IVX. That one on issue 18 definitely both are. Nine, 20 is just the aftermath. It's just, yeah, the aftermath of the story, and um, it's just, uh, well, it just basically, the X-Men, after they evacuate Limbo, with the exception of the mansion... They just play a game of baseball. Of course, they also find Cerebra, whose body had been destroyed during events of IVX. And then after that, the book ends basically when the X-Men just moved to Central Park. And of course, there's X-Men Prime, which I've already talked about before, when I talk about the final trade for all new X-Men. Um, all the issues here are pretty good. Yeah, great looking cover there for that. <laughs> Excuse me, yep. Uh, this is pretty good. I'm going to get this a 9 out of 10. Next up is Uncanny X-Men Superior Volume 4 IVX, which contains Uncanny X-Men number 616 to 619 and number 30, even though it's the first name for this volume. I say it's in number 30 because I counted what the previous name was. Yeah. Um, if you wonder how many annual, like how I figured that, because uh, the original numbering annual stopped at 18, then you have annuals 95 to 2001. Those are like uh, th those are seven annuals, which that brings it basically 25. Volume two had three uh, when it was brought back in 2006. It had three annuals that brings it to 28. The previous volume of this series had one annual that brings it to 29. That means the annual here is the 30th annual of the series. And 619, 6, 600, uh, 16, 19 is basically 616 and 619 of the series. Um, yeah, pretty much every single issue is just a standalone issue in here. Uh, Colin Bunn does the writing in here with artwork uh, by Edgar Salazar, who does issues 16 and 18, 19, and Ken Lashley does issue 17. Yeah, the issues in here are all pretty much standalone. It's basically the first issue is just, well, features Karnak. And it's just, well, Jean Grey and Karnak, uh, while also starring Phantom X, and also showing the origin of, um, the Cuckoo's, Death of Cuckoo's. Yep. Uh, let's see. That's just the first issue itself. Yep. Uh, the second issue, I think the second issue, correct. Um, yeah. The 17th issue in here is just Sabretooth and, well, Sabretooth, Rachel Graham, and, of course, uh, you have... Uh, Monette basically using her brother's powers to sort of eat the bones of the humans. I don't know why Colin Bunn did this for, but she's still doing this in um, Generation X. Yeah, she's still doing this, surprisingly. Yep. 
and it's just basically these two fight and there's that um, issue 18 is just well is well just an issue featuring uh, Sebastian Shaw and and Zorn just talking and of course dealing with basically what well, it, it just an issue set at Zorn's temple that's really what this issue is there's hardly any appearances by uh, Magneto's well there's one member of X-Men uh, Magneto's team that's Archangel yep he appears in this issue um, and then the final issue well it's just something that's been building up for a little while like the issue starts out with the destruction of the of War Room X yeah it gets destroyed by Psylocke and you have a fight that takes up almost the entire issue of Magneto versus Psylocke. It, it's a great story. It just basically ties up a loose end from the series, uh, which I do appreciate Colin Wolf for doing that. Mm -hmm. And then we have the annual, which is basically the first story. This is something I think was done because I think because Chris Joseph Craig Kyle probably had heard, probably from fans, that one of their characters got killed off by Colin Bunn during his run for Kenny X Men. So, this is just my theory. I think because a lot of people didn't like the fact that Joshua Heller got killed off, a.k.a. Um, I'm trying to remember his name. Uh, his, actually, his name is Joshua Foley. I think his name is Elixir. Yeah, his name is Elixir. Uh, he was the character that Chris Joseph and Craig Kyle created for the new X-Men Academy X series. And because the fact that Colin Bunn had him die in, I think it was issue two. Yeah, it was issue two. They had him die. And... Uh, my guess is Colin, uh, Colin Bunn probably got word from Chris Joseph Craig Kyle. like, hey, you killed off one of our characters. We're not very happy with that. It's about that we're busy. Can you please bring him back? Yeah, and he was brought back. That's my theory of the reason why this story happened. Because, well, Chris Joseph Craig Kyle probably not happy that one of their characters got killed off by Colin Bunn. Yep. And it just basically deals with um, Elix's resurrection. And the second story in here is just, well, all focused on Domino. Yep. Yeah, that's simply what the second story is focused on. It's called Lady Luck. It's done by Anthony Piper, who does the artwork and the coloring. Colin about this first, so Ken Lashley does the, the, the artwork. This is a fun little story. What it is, it, yeah, it's a great little story. Um, I appreciate the fact the Aim did this. Now, what happened to the rest of this team? Well, McNeil got moved to the X in blue, so that's where he is. Sabretooth got moved to Weapon X. Uh, Monak got moved over Generation X. Um, as for the rest of the team, they got moved over to Astonishing X-Men. Yeah, Phantom X, Mystique, Archangel, uh, Psylocke, um, yeah, just these four. These four got moved over to Astonishing X-Men. So basically, it's kind of like they disbanded this team, put them in several different places. Colin Bunn just like, okay, I have X-Men Blue I'm going to do. I'm putting Mac Neal in the book because I love writing this character. That's probably my reasoning for, that's my theory of why he's in X-Men Blue. But hey, at least all these characters are still around, unlike some other characters I can think of. But at least they're still active in the X-Men books. Got to at least praise uh, the X-Men for doing that. So, like I said, he's in blue. Um, Sabretooth is a Weapon X. Mana is in Generation X. And the rest of the team is in Astonishing X-Men. So it's like you take three members, put them in three different books, and the rest of the team goes to Astonishing X-Men. Along with Old Man Logan, Rogue, and Gambit. Yeah. Though, my honest opinion is about that book is that Wolverine should, Old Man Logan should not be part of that book at all. Excuse me. They should have added somebody else, some some other Wolverine. Um, but that's here nor there. Maybe I'll get a chance to do the first trade that collects the issues of the first arc, which just recently wrapped up for the series. Um, but Colin does a pretty good job in here. Uh, basically having the book tied into IVX, like the first three issues do, uh, I would say the first two issues do in fact do that. The other two issues have nothing really much to do with IVX at all. Yeah, that's the weird thing. Like the first two issues do, the last two issues have nothing to do with IVX at all. That's simply, um, what it is when it comes to, uh, this particular series. Um, but it's a pretty neat conclusion to the series. Um, it's just too bad Marvel just got it got rid of the series and they never brought it back. Maybe I don't think X Men Red is a continuation of the series. 
Now, I don't know why Marvel got rid of this particular title, but I enjoyed it. It's one of it's one of the two titles I actually are reading. Now, I will review this run in the future when I get a chance to, well, catch up, re get back to reviewing uh, this series. Eventually, I will. But this volume and the last two volumes won't take me too long. Okay? So, I'm going to give this book a 9 out of 10 as well. It's a pretty good run. But, uh... But some people say that, hit, that the Civil War do X-Men series, which is also River Colony, but it's actually better than that run. Um, but this is a pretty decent conclusion for what it is. It's not like an arc, these last four issues. It's just four standalone issues. That's what they are. Just standalone issues. Just tying into IVX while also wrapping up loose ends from this run. Which, not a bad thing to do. Okay. So, that's it for this episode. Uh, stay tuned for episode 486 and double number 399, where I'm going to talk about two Avengers trades. Yep, so we finished, we did Deadpool with the previous two episodes. This episode, we did two X Men trades. Next episode is going to be Avengers. Okay, until I see you on my next video, bye.